So let me ask you to hold that thought for like 30 seconds because we're going to come right back to exacerbations. And I have some questions about how we measure those and the proper way of doing so. But before I do that, I want to just f f f finish up the last topic with you in terms of um, not just you, but the, as, as an industry. Um, do, you, do you think this is you know, allowing for Lama Lava to be started together and then add therapy? Does it have to be one and then two and then three? You know, what are you seeing out there? Yeah, what I'm seeing is this is a disease with pretty significant consequences and very high cost. And so I don't see the appetite for payers to really, uh, you know, prior authorize, be step with one, you know, start with one and move to two and move to three and, and the sequence. I see choice within each category, which I think speaks to the need to be able to somewhat individualize. I see greater opportunity, certainly, on make, let's make the diagnosis and the um, uh, unmet need in terms of even understanding who has the disease and, and who does not. Um, and I also see that you know, with real-world data that helps us all understand the magnitude of benefit of what triplets may bring, particularly for a moderate severe population, uh, that's what I see is the opportunity and you know, really some of the discussion here we had around maybe an algorithm that cuts through the chase in terms of how do you medically optimize someone. That's so, what I think the appetite is. And it's around how do we impact total cost of care as well. So we keep coming back to exacerbation. Yes. And, and I'm curious about a number of different things, right? Can you identify patients ahead of time who you think are at increased risk? And whose definition of exacerbation are you using? Does the patient have to be hospitalized? Do they have to have gone to urgent care? Can it just be their description of a really bad day at home? Like, how do you define exacerbation as you're saying things like, well, if they have more than X number of exacerbations, we should consider adding, adding an ICS? Frank, you want to start? Yeah. So, you know, we, we've had these intellectual debates on stage in audiences that the COPD Foundation has sponsored with patients in the audience. And, and if you give the patient the chance to go to the microphone, they'll say, you know, you guys can debate all you want what an exacerbation is, but I'll tell you when I'm having one. I know it. And that's probably right. You know, when they call in and they say, I'm having a flare up, I'm more short of breath, or I'm bringing up more sputum and coughing more, um, what can you do for me? Um, that's an exacerbation. It's a change in symptoms. And, you know, the pure definition usually correlates with that, a change in symptoms for at least two days that warrants an escalation in therapy. And, and that... So there are two, uh, two paths to, to look at that, right? One is, what is that effect on lung function, right, in terms of their clinical progression? But the other is the effect on quality of life and trying to pair those together. And, and what do you concentrate on and what do you focus on in the office? Well, we do understand that exacerbations are bad things. And the more frequent they are, the worse it is. They have more airway inflammation. There's more rapid deterioration in lung function in those who are frequent exacerbators two or more a year, uh, that there is in mortality risk to, over the course of time. It's certainly something that we aggressively need to treat. And indeed, we have medicines that are available that can make a difference. Uh, uh, whether or not it's a combination of bronchodilators and inhaled corticosteroids, or if you're continuing to exacerbate considerations of things like uh, Refumilast, which is a, an oral drug that's available, or azithromycin potentially is an immune modulator. So I think it's important for everyone to understand that we actually have a number of different therapies that are available, and being aggressive in trying to prevent those exacerbations is really a critical issue, not just from the standpoint of cost, although it's a critical issue from that standpoint, but in the issue of quality of life, continued quality of life, uh, and, uh, and length of life as well. It is important. So how limited is your ability to measure you know, we've talked about uh, uh, lung function and, and in general quality of life. Uh, how, what is your ability to look at exacerbation rate and things like improvements in activities of daily living with the data that you have in terms of helping to support or deny different types of therapy? Well, we have claims data. So we have utilization data on the pharmaceutical side. We have claims data on hospitalizations, on ER visits. 
What I find fascinating is can we look at, and there's a lot of interest in patient reported outcomes. So can uh, actually the PRO, in this case, predict an exacerbation? And if we actually were able to capture this data, and perhaps it's more real-time tools like apps that can integrate into disease management, and hence then define perhaps the protocol or the referral or when the patient is or actually to seeing see a provider. Fit, to see if they're active. Exactly. But the, the elements of PROs that actually have a predictive ability and are um, uh, meaningful and potentially impactful on what can be done to prevent that exacerbation, I find to be sort of at the forefront of what then can we do to translate these PROs into better care at the right time to prevent that exacerbation. And, and so the, the, just to reiterate something you said to make sure we're getting it is uh, absenteeism is reasonably easy to measure, productivity is very hard to measure, and presenteeism is very hard to measure. And the payer may not have that data at all. Okay. The, the employer may, but it's very hard to merge with what the data sets are disparate and they exist in different, um, with different entities. So the health plan unless it's their own employee, may not have um, absenteeism data, for example.